Hello guys, I'm John Benderwaffles Aljets, and uh, you know, I was trying to think of what sort of videos I can bring to the channel, sort of new ideas sort of things, and I realized something. I freaking love RPGs. I also love making games. In fact, I've been making games for a long time, since I was about 8 years old, and I'm 25 now. I have a lot of experience with this sort of thing, and what's a great thing about YouTube? It's a fantastic platform for sharing your skills and helping people develop others. So that's why I've decided that I'm gonna help you guys learn how to make RPGs. Now, there's a lot of different pieces of software and things that we could use to make RPGs, and there's a lot of different resources out there for learning it. So I've decided that, you know what, we're just gonna go with the easiest, we're gonna go with the quickest, and we're gonna learn RPG Maker. So I've decided that I'm going to make a series of videos that are going to help you learn how to make your very own RPG. We're going to go through all the steps of development, from the beginning planning stages all the way through map creation and even scripting. And me and you together, we're going to make a game. So leave any creative inhibitions you might have at the door and let's get developing. This episode is just going to be your basic overview of the software so that you can get a feel for the layout of the work area. Alright, so we're here, we're looking at my uh, my Steam library. This is the software tab. You can get uh, RPG Maker on Steam. There are three different kinds. I believe that there are only three. There's RPG Maker VX Ace, XP, and 2003, I think. Now, for the purposes of these tutorial videos, I'm going to be using RPG Maker VX Ace, mainly because it's the newest, most full-featured um, version of the software. There are a lot of people out there who would argue that XP is the superior software, and I'm not going to argue with them, because in a lot of ways, I do prefer it. Uh, if you notice, I've used way more hours in XP than VX Ace, and this is just my time on Steam. I used XP before... I got it on Steam, but I'm still gonna I'm gonna be teaching with VX Ace because I feel like beginners are gonna be learning um, VX Ace probably a little bit more before XP. As I said, it's a little bit more fully featured. Um, so let's just get in there and launch the uh, software. Okay, so again, this is just gonna be a quick overview. Um, let's get rid of let's get rid of me. Okay, so. As I was saying, um, this is kind of the main interface. When you first start it up, you'll have to create a new project, uh, name it whatever you want. That doesn't much matter. Again, I'm just going to go through how the software works. Over here, we have this is your map bank. So whenever you make a new map, it appears over here. This is the map view, um, and this is where you paint on, you know, your world. Uh, this is your tile set. This is what you paint your world with. Right now it's set to the outdoors tile set. There are, uh, I believe, four, right? Um, there's a certain number of preset, yeah, four preset tile sets that come with VX Ace. Um, and you can make new ones if you want, but we won't be covering that in this basics tutorial. Uh, each tile set has different um, tabs, uh, this is your basic stuff, this is like buildings and stuff for the outdoors. As I said, each different tile set will have different tabs. Uh, up here is your paint tools, uh, you've got a pencil, you can draw a rectangle, circle, um, I've actually never used the circle tool. Wow, it looks like crap. Okay. Um, you got your fill bucket, and then this is your shadow tool for giving shadows to buildings to give things a more three-dimensional, more realistic look. Um, up here you have your different drawing sections, I guess is what you'd call it. You have your map, which is where you paint your tiles and things of that nature. This is your event, where you do all your scripting um, and things of that nature. This is the scripting menu. You're going to be seeing this a lot during the tutorials because this is where the vast majority of the game design actually comes down to it. You could do all your map creation and all of that, but nothing happens until you're editing within this. So, okay. And then this is your region. This is where you paint encounter regions. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to cover that in the tutorial. If we do, it's going to be very, very light. It's not 
super important to the base game that we're going to be working on. You have your zooms here for your map. You can zoom all the way out to one eighth. Uh, it's pretty far out. Over here, you've got um, all your kind of nitty gritty um, buttons. So you got your database. This is also something that we're going to be seeing a lot, and I'm going to cover this in a second. So we'll come back to this. Uh, this is your section or your resource manager. Sorry. Um, this is where you can just look through all of the files that you have in the directory and you can import, export, all that sort of stuff. This is your script editor, which I don't think we're going to be touching upon in the in this base tutorial. Uh, but if you're putting in a custom battle system or any sort of custom systems at all, it goes in here into the script editor. Uh, this is your me your sound test, music test, all that sort of thing. This is kind of like the resource manager. Uh, except this one is specifically for sound. So you can go through and you can hear, you know. And yeah, just get a preview of the uh, sounds. This is a character generator. I am going to teach you how to use this. Although, honestly, uh, unless you're developing a game that's meant to be kind of seen by your friends and stuff, I kind of see this as a cheap solution. Um, for character creation because really you should be doing your own custom uh, graphics and stuff which I might teach you a little bit probably not going to go too much into but I'm still going to teach you guys the character generator because it is a useful tool for when you're just starting out uh, over here you've got uh, these are kind of this one is not so important this one is extremely important obviously as it says there that's the play test button you can also hit F12 um, this is manage projects if you have Wow, that's just, I have a lot of stuff that I start and then never finish. Um, if you if you have multiple projects and you want to be able to load and stuff from the Steam Cloud, all that sort of stuff, that's the button to kind of go into. So now let's, let's look at the database, um, which I said we were going to come back to. So here it is. The database, this ha stores all of the information that makes up the basis of your project. So like here we have the Actors tab. This is your Characters. Um, and these are the default characters that come once you when you start a new project. You can create new ones, you can overwrite them, and you can delete those. Uh, here we've got the classes. These actually make up the nitty gritty of the characters. So it sets up like what, how does their HP change as they level? How does their MP change as they level? Um, all of their stats here. What skills do they get as they level? Uh, what's their experience curve look like? Which is this gets into the really real nitty gritty stuff. I'm not sure if we're necessarily going to go into a lot of depth about this, but this is still something important to keep in mind as you're designing your game. Over here just sets the basic features of, excuse me, uh, basic features of the class as you're making it. So stuff like what kind of armor they can equip, what sort of uh, skill they use whether it's special or magic and stuff a lot of that is pretty self-explanatory um i don't feel like i need to go into too much depth into that i kind of feel like you can sort of figure that out um again i don't think that you're stupid so i feel like you can read uh here's your skills again these are all the default skills um this kind of just it's the skills that you can use in battle uh so you know it determines like well what kind of damage does it do is it elemental you know that sort of thing uh so i'm gonna go into detail on this later not necessarily something that i'm gonna go too deep into because this is a little bit more of an advanced thing um but we will definitely be looking at it over here we have items this is something that we are going to be doing we're going to be doing item creation as default there's not a lot of items um, there's no key items, which is something that we're going to be creating definitely for the purposes of uh, these tutorial series. Uh, pretty self-explanatory stuff. Again, I'll go into it in more detail. Weapons. A lot of this thing, items, weapons, armors, they're all basically the same things. They're just determining things that your characters can use. Um, again, all pretty self-explanatory. We will go into it more. Armor, just like weapons. Uh, enemies. It's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, they're the enemies that will appear during battle in the game. Everything from your basic, you know, s rate. That's rat. Uh, your basic, you know, 
beginning enemies all the way up to your end game boss. You know, this is something we're going to be going into more detail later. So look for that. Uh, troops, this determines um, in what ways you'll see uh, enemies. So when you, when you get into a battle, it isn't going to just give you a random grouping of them. Uh, when you determine what your random encounters are, there are you have it set so it's like okay it's a random encounter from a set list of troops and troops are uh a determinant like set encounter so you might run into two slimes or you'll run into two bats or you'll run into two hornets but you will never run into three hornets you'll never run into three slimes you'll never run into one bat it's a determinant set so these this is where you set your encounters and this is also where you can set specific battle events which is something that we are going to talk about um it's a little bit of an advanced feature but i feel like it's super useful when it comes to crafting your story so it's something that we're going to talk about uh states really for the most part you don't need to mess with this um this is all your status effects and things like that. You got anything from paralysis to sleep to blind um, and death. You definitely do not want to get rid of death. You can get rid of any of the rest of these. Do not get rid of death. Um, because then you can't lose the game. Uh, animations. We aren't going to touch on this too much in this tutorial series. Maybe if I do an advanced tutorial series later, um, we'll talk about it. But this is obviously just where, you know, your attack animations happen. Wow, that was pretty gnarly. Um, okay, so moving on over here to tile sets. We're not going to talk about tile set creation during this uh, sort of beginning tutorial series. Maybe later if I do an advanced series. But this is where all of your um, tile sets are defined. Uh, so kind of an important thing to keep in mind, but not necessarily something we're going to use here. Common events, I've never used these, and we're not going to probably for this tutorial series if we do it'll be a surprise even to me uh so this is systems tab this is where you set all the very basic stuff so you've got your your vehicle graphics um for boat ship airship you got your game title kind of important the initial party kind of important currency unit whether it's g gill uh rupees however you want to use it um all of this stuff in here is very self-explanatory you set the sound effects for things you set the music for uh specific uh, situation such so as the title screen, your battle, your battle end, fanfare, all that sort of stuff. Your default sounds, your title screen, all of that is made here. Um, yeah, and then terms. This is just where you define uh, what is, what are the types of armor, what are the skill types, all that sort of thing. We aren't going to touch upon this in the tutorial, uh, but it's something that you can dive into and really like. It's not that difficult to figure out. It's pretty self-explanatory, guys. Um, and that's everything for the database. Uh, and really, that's everything that we're going to go into too much here. Let me bring myself back up. Uh, so, it's it's a pretty easy use program. It's a pretty easy to understand program. Um, a lot of things are pretty self-explanatory. But there are a lot of nuances that you have to sort of know how the system works to really get a lot of I'm trying to think of the word here you really need to understand how to use the software to get sort of your bang for your buck to get some really impressive results it's really simple but it can create some really great things and that's it, guys. That's uh, all for today. In the next episode, we're going to be going over the game design document. So it's basically just going to be looking at the very, very beginning planning stages of the game. If you want, uh, you can click on this button here, and that'll take you to the next video, if it's up. If the video is not up, it will just take you back to my channel, where you can subscribe. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, do the other thing. Uh, leave a comment down below letting me know what you think, and if you have any questions about RPG Maker, and I will try to address them throughout the course of these videos. And, as always guys, don't forget to subscribe, and have a good one.